most of the time when you are dividing decimals, you get to a point where the remainder equals zero. That is the point at which you stop dividing. Your solution is found. So, for example, if we are having a problem like 6 divided by 4, we are going to get to the point where we have a remainder of 0 and our problem is finished, our solution has been found. Let's, let's take a look at that example. If I have 6 divided by 4, I begin by doing the first operation, which is 6 divided by 4. What number? times 4, what's the largest whole number, time that I can multiply by 4, that will give me an answer equal to or less than 6, and the answer is 1. So I place my 1 here, and I multiply 1 times 4 equals 4, and place my 4 here, and subtract 6 minus 4 equals 2. So 2 is my remainder, but then I'm going to turn my whole number 6 into a decimal, by placing a decimal point right after the whole number and adding a zero. Now I can bring this zero down to join the remainder from the previous operation. So now I have 20 here, 20 divided by 4. What number, what whole number, what is the largest whole number that I can multiply by 4 to get a product less than or equal to 20? And the answer to that question is 5. If I multiply, oh, I have to remember when I add that decimal to my whole number here of 6, I want to come up above and make sure that I put a decimal point up in my quotient. That is one piece that I do not want to forget. I have to have a decimal point up in my quotient when I've added a decimal point to my dividend. So I put my answer to my previous question of what is the largest whole number that I can multiply by 4 to get a product less than or equal to 20, the answer is 5. So 5 times 4 equals 20. So I place the 20 here, subtract it from this 20, and with the answer of 0, that tells me that I now have a remainder of 0, and I am finished with my calculation. I have found a solution to 6 divided by 4. The solution is 1.5. I can report that as my answer, 1.5 with a square around it, and I'm done. However, this isn't always possible. So sometimes we have a problem that doesn't get us to a point of a zero remainder. So for example, if I have the number 10 and I want to divide by 3, 10 divided by 3, let's see what happens. So I begin, first of all, by 1 divided by 3, which is 0. I, I'm going to move on to my 10. 10 divided by 3 is 3. What whole number can I multiply 3 by to get an answer less than or equal to 10? And the largest whole number that works for that question is the number 3. So I place my 3 right here above the 0 because I had moved over 1 to, to divide 10 by 3. So I place my answer 3 right above the 0 and I do my calculation of 3 times 3 equals 9 and I place it right here underneath my 10. So 10 minus 9 equals 1 and I write my answer right here below. Now just like over here when we had a remainder we made our dividend into a decimal by adding a decimal here at the end of the 10 and adding a zero. Now as soon as I put that decimal here at the end of the 10, I should go right up above and place a decimal here in the quotient so that I don't forget. So I make 10, the whole number 10, into a decimal by putting a decimal point at the end and adding a zero. And then I can bring the zero down to join my remainder from the previous calculation. And so now I have a problem here of 10 divided by 3 again. So again the question, what's the largest whole number that I can multiply by 3 and get a product that's less than or equal to 10? And again the answer is 3. 10 divided by 3 equals 3, and I'm again going to do my calculation of 3 times 3 equals 9, 
and place my 9 here, 10 minus 9 is 1. Now, I'm not finished yet because I still have a remainder here. And so as we learned, we can add as many zeros as we want to after the decimal point in any number. So let's try adding another zero and see if maybe we'll be able to finish this problem. I put a zero here, bring it down to join this one, and I have a 10. I see a pattern starting here. Well, the pattern started back here, but I see this pattern continuing where I'm going to continue to have 10 divided by 3 equals 3 with a remainder. 3 times 3 equals 9. 10 minus 9 equals 1. If I add another 0 and bring it down, again, I'm going to have a continuous answer of 3, 3, 3, 3 after my decimal point. You can see that this division will never end. These kind of divisions are called non-terminating divisions because they never end, they never terminate. When you come across such division problems, you can stop at any time. When you do stop will depend on what problem you are calculating. If you are calculating money, for example, you are going to stop after the second number, after the decimal point. So if you were calculating money and your answer was ending up to be $5.3333, continuing on and on, you wouldn't report all those extra threes. You would stop your answer right here at $5.33, $5.33, because we don't count money with four decimal positions. And the same way if you were calculating body temperature, for example, and you had a, a temperature of 100.333 and the threes were continuing, you would report this as 100.3 because we use one decimal point in reporting body temperature. You will also see a notation with these types of never-ending decimals where we place a small bar on top of the number that repeats. So 3.3333333 will sometimes look like 3.33 with a bar over that second three. That means that the three continues forever. You might also see it just as 3.3 .3 and the bar is directly over the first three. And that means the same thing. It means three point and then the three continues on and on for infinity. So this is just a little look at never-ending quotient, decimals with never-ending quotient.